is Matt from Trailbreak.net. I wanted to bring you another little video on some neat math channel things that I figured out. The other day, somebody asked how we can get minimum corner velocities and then maximum straightaway velocities. And here we have the GPS map of it. And if we look at our measures graphs, we can have a speed graph of it. But how can we hone in on what the minimum speed is in each of these corners? And then at the same is how can we pull out these maximums? So maybe we can compare it lap to lap or day to day or session to session. So I put a little thought into it. I, I came up with a way that I think is pretty good and um, something I haven't seen anyone else do in Race Studio 2. So I wanted to share it because I think it'll help a lot of people out. And the first thing we had to do is use this aim distance feet, which takes the lap integer for the, the each individual lap and when you get it, it's going to come up with this formula that they gave us. And the only difference is it's going to say speed 1 instead of GPS speed. So you're going to want to change that from speed 1 to whatever your speed input. It could be GPS, or if you'd like to use a wheel speed, you could use that as well. Once we've done that, I went and I defined where each corner is. And the way I did that was I created my math channel. So I said insert, and then I named it turn 1. Um, and I was a little bit lazy. I didn't go through and define my uh, scales or units or anything because we're not going to use them. These are really intermediary channels to get what we want at the end. And what I did is I used the bit and function. And what that does is it combines two terms when they're available. So I took it and I used bit and. And the first part I use here is a greater than. So I use bit and if it's greater than and then I used our aim distance feet channel and this 1050 is a number that I took and it's it's not really too critical it's a number that's here before the start of the corner and we can go back and look at that and pick a point in here anywhere we want and then up here you'll see on our distance is it gives us 990 feet. I use 1050. You could use 990. It really just has to be anywhere after the break zone as you're breaking so you get that minimum. And really it could be back here somewhere. It's not going to affect it because we're going to pick out the minimum speed in here. And we're also going to use a number on the the back side of this is you know here where I clicked is just about 1500 feet and again it's not really critical. So we go in we can see I used 1200. I was a little um, tighter on this apex but in reality it might be a little bit better if your spread is bigger so that it um, gives you some more room for where that minimum speed is though with a pretty consistent driver it's not going to change a lot and then after I did that channel I went back and I used a channel I used called turn one velocity minimum and what I did here was I used an if statement and then I used a minimum in there. So I used if, and then in the aim syntax, I used turn one. So it says if we're in those distances in turn one, give me the minimum. And then I use GPS speed or um, 100, because 100 is a speed higher than I would get to in that corner. That 100, depending on your car, you can make it 200, you can make it 300, as long as it's faster than any of your minimum corner speeds you're going to be. That's really the key part there. And then uh, the next part with the if is when you're not in turn one, it's going to give you an output of 200. And this 200 needs to be a speed that's higher than what you'll attain anywhere else on the track. Um, because that's going to make this channel give us the minimum on the output. So if we go and look at what that gave us as it chugs away on my channels here for a second is we have our speed graph and I'm just going to auto scale these so we can look at it. Now this is my turn one channel and what it did here is we see that when we get to turn one if we click where these are this gives us those measures so we've now defined where turn one is and then we use our turn one minimum velocity channel and what that one does is it gives us this output the yellow is not the best color here so let's change this to a maybe a dark green so it shows up just a little bit better 
And we can see it's up at that 200, and then we get into this turn one range, it drops down, and we see the minimum speed in turn one is 64.37. So now that we have that, we say, well, geez, we got it for one corner, and we duplicate that same idea for all the other corners that we have here. We can do turn two, and we can take turn two minimum velocity, and we can bring those up and look at them. We go, okay, well, here's define turn two. You know, it's turn two at Watkins Glen, so you're accelerating kind of through the whole thing. We see the minimum speed was 100.23, and we say, well, that's great, but it doesn't really help us be able to compare this lap to lap. So then what I went and did is I did a, a channel report. And in this channel report, what we have now is all those corners with the minimum velocities. And I did the same thing. I'll show you in a minute how to do the straightaway speeds as well. So when we look at these turn one minimum velocities, we can see this was an out lap. Turn one was 48. And then we have a 60. 1.83, 63.13, you know, uh, a 59 here, 64. So it gives us all those minimums. And one of the nice things with the AIM Race Studio is it will give you your minimum in blue and your maximum bolded. Um, I'm sorry, that's the, the fast lap bolded. Because we're looking at minimums, it'll give us those minimums. Um, in the blue and then you know when we have our maximums it gives us the maximums in the blue which is a nice little feature and we can also go and turn on the um, the graphical bar so we can compare them a little bit but the way we added these in here is we have two ways we can click the plus or minus here we can hit add and remove over here so we just go in and we pick our say turn one minimum velocity and we picked our minimum out of the available report objects we hit our arrow to the right and put it in and then we can populate these with all our different items for folks that want to do the straightaway maximums that we say here we do the same basic procedure so we're going to say modify our math channels and then what you can see that I did is I went in and I created start finish to turn one I use my bit operator with a greater than distance from zero which would be start finish to less than the distance at 735 which is a distance I picked that's after um, any real conceivable break marker for turn one you want to make sure that maybe is all the way down to the apex so if somebody really kind of kamikazes it or, or you have a great lap where you kind of figure things out and you can break a little bit deeper that you really capture that greater speed so I went and did this for all the straightaways between start, finish, and turn one. Um, the straightaway from turn one to turn two, straightaway from turn four, which is the top of the S's to the bus stop. And I picked those feet off our graph. And then what I went and did is I created a velocity maximum channel in here. And I said if the distance from start, finish to one. And then what we do is instead of the minimum like we used in the corner, we're going to use maximum. And I say it's the maximum of the GPS speed, or I picked a ridiculously low speed, 10 miles an hour in this case, so that it was something less than we would ever have on the track. You know, Watkins Glen, you could probably, you could look through your minimum corners that we just did here, and you could pick a speed of, um, you know, I, the first one I see here is 48. You could pick 30 miles an hour, 20 miles an hour. Depending on your track, that number could change, but there's no track I know if you're going to have a speed anywhere around 10. So I picked 10. And then the next output, I just picked 10 as well, because that's a speed that's going to be slower um, than anything we get at any point, so that it gives us um, something we can take the maximum of. And then once we do that, I went into the channel report, and I added those segments with the maximum function. So I took, um, we can look here, straight one from turn one to turn two and then I took the maximum of that so it gives us those outputs here now what's great about it is we have a comparison for this one session and if we put these math channels into um, another session we can compare session to session cars to cars um, friends to friends whatever it may be but it gives us a good chance to look at all those different speeds that we have whether it's the high speed on the straight the minimum in the corners 
and really be able to compare that. The last little tidbit I wanted to give you is once we do this, you can see that Race Studio puts these in maximums together and then it does them alphabetical by name and then it does minimums together alphabetical by name. Well, maybe that's not the best way to look for it. So then what I did is I used our export to Excel function and I click that and you can tell it where you want it to put your export information. It's going to export it as an Excel file. So I did that and then I took that Excel file and I just dressed it up a little bit. As when you do it, you're going to have to add in the channel names. So I added those across the top. I put a nice title on it. Um, what I did here is I showed how you can use some of the the graph functions to put in to colorize things to make them different colors as you go faster or slower. I added some spark lines so you can kind of see how it varied um, from lap to lap. I went in and I put an average to look at it and say, oh geez, you know, I have all these laps. What's a good average speed out of these? And then I did the same and I got a little more statistical and I said, well, what's the standard deviation? Because as I look at it, I go, well, geez, you know, straightaways are ones that we're all pretty good there at putting our foot down. But we look at it and go, well, wow, this straightaway had a two mile an hour variance. This one only had a, a 0.55 uh, speed variance. And you can do the same thing in the corner. You go, geez, my, my average standard deviation of speeds in turn one was 3.3. Maybe I need to work on that a little bit better because turn seven I only had 0.78. So this kind of shows you your consistency in different spots and it gives you a, a something you can look at and, and use to evaluate it. And then I also did a, a difference from the average. And I said, well, how much did these vary? You know, this, is, this goes along with the standard deviation, but it gives us a chance to look at some of the numbers in a, a different way and say the, the bigger these numbers are is a difference from the average. The... Uh, the more inconsistency there is and the more area for opportunity and, and improvement there is. So the Excel functions here are a little bit for another day, but hopefully this gives you some ideas of how you can get in here and look at the minimum velocities and if nothing else this gives you a great spot to start and when you go track to track it's always going to, or inside one track it's always going to have the same order so I think it's a good way for people to look at things and measure. Hope this helped you out and you look forward to some more videos. Thanks!